So this one is a general solution for four marks. Um, so straight away, this one's pretty straightforward. Can you see that this over here is a double, not a double angle, it's a compound angle. I should have put the formulas here, but you know on the formula sheet, there's those four, sin A minus B, sin A plus B, cos A minus B, and cos A plus B. Well, you would just look at your formula sheet and you would try to see which one it is. Now, this one is the one that has a plus in the middle, and it's a cos cos and a sin sin. So if you look at your formula sheet, you should realize that there is a formula that goes like this. Cos alpha minus beta is equal to cos alpha cos beta minus, I mean plus, sin alpha sin beta. And so we are going to be taking all of this, and we are going to rewrite it in that. So it's going to become cos of 4x minus the other angle, which is just x. Okay, and then, um, and then that's going to be equal to negative 0, 0,7. So I'm just using compound angles from our formula sheet. Now I can easily simplify as cos of 3x equals to negative 0, 0,7. And now all of a sudden we have a general solution question. So with a general solution question, you don't worry about what's inside the bracket. You leave, or you don't worry about what's inside the cos or the sin or the tan. You can ignore that. So in fact, I am going to take a big red box and just ignore that for now. It doesn't matter what's inside that box. What matters is that we have to get the reference angle. So you say the reference angle is equal to, and now this is the part where you put on your calculator um, shift, cos, and then most schools in South Africa, um, you are not going to put the negative on the calculator. You're going to keep it as a positive 0, 0,7. OK, and then if you put that on your calculator, that is going to give you a reference angle, which will be equal to cos shift cos 0 0.7. And that's going to give us 45.57 degrees. OK, so that is the reference angle. Now it is telling us it is telling us that cos is negative. Now, if you know on your cost diagram, cos is negative in quadrant number two and quadrant number three. And so those are the quadrants that we are now going to work in, quadrant number two and quadrant number three. So this will be quadrant two. This will be quadrant three. Now we are ready to see what is under the red box. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, it's 3x. OK, so now what we do is we put 3x over here. And we put 3x over here. Then in quadrant 2, we say 180 minus. In quadrant 3, we say 180 plus. OK, because that's what we always say. In quadrant 2, we always say 180 minus. In quadrant 3, we always say 180 plus. Now we put the reference angle where that we found, which was 45,57. And then you must just remember to say that whole boring part of plus k times 360, k is an element of z. Your teacher might use the letter n instead of k. It doesn't really matter. We must just remember to put this boring part here, k times 360, k is an element of z. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to simplify a little bit. And so that's going to give us 3x equals 2, 180 minus 45,57, which is 134. 0.43 plus k times 360. k is an element of integers. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide everything by 3. And so that's going to give me 44.81. Now, here's the important part. You also have to divide the 360. And so that's going to be k times 120. What some students do is they forget about the K360. And then at the very end of the question, they're like, oh, yes, I need to put plus K360. And then they go fill it in at the end. But they fail to realize that that 360 has now turned into a 120. And so just remember to put it in from the very beginning. As soon as you start the question, you must start with your K360. OK. And then on the other side, 
gives us 75.19 plus k times 120. k is an element of z.